the summer of 1974 when the American Dream became a big box office attraction. One evening, coming back from Miami, uh, we uh, were flying on a Cessna 173. Buddy Colt was the pilot. Austin Idol was sitting next to Buddy Colt. And uh, Bobby Shane and I were sitting in the back. We got to Sarasota and we saw some storm moving in across Tampa. And we radioed uh, Tampa Control and asked if uh, we would have any trouble because we were on a visual flight plan. Buddy Colt was not an instrument rated pilot. We wanted to know if we could beat the storm in. And he assured us we could. So as we approached Tampa, the weather had already moved in and we were socked in uh, in a cloud, a fog bank, cloud bank, whatever you want to call it. And we were just getting ready to uh, turn around and go back to Sarasota when a uh, guy from McNeil Air Force Base said, I can get you in, there's a break in the storm. Keep coming, keep coming. We're going in, we're not instrument. We only have a visual flight plan and we're asking what is the ceiling. They said 17, 15, 1600 feet. So we're dropping down, we're dropping down, we're dropping down. And finally, when we broke through the cloud cover, we were too high and off to the right. So we had to cut back out over the bay to make a new approach. And as we started the long, slow turn back out over the bay, apparently Buddy got vertigo, the pilot, and flew us at 180 miles an hour into Tampa Bay. When I heard Austin Idol scream, pull up, we're going to hit the water, I reached down and I popped my, my belt, uh, saved my life. Buddy sitting next to me, Bobby Shane, died on impact. I was thrown maybe a hundred or so feet from the plane. Buddy Colt and Austin Idol sunk with the plane. When I came to the top of the water, uh, I couldn't see anyone. It was raining really hard. The water was really, really choppy. So way off in the distance, I saw a light. So I started swimming towards the light and I swam a while and I came up on uh, Austin Idol. Uh, and I asked him, I said, where's Buddy, where's, where's Bobby? Have you seen them? No, he said. I said, come on, let's, let's, I can walk now. You know, the water was low tide. So I, I said, come on, let's walk. He said, I can't walk, I have no feet. So I laid on my back and hooked him with my, with my uh, right arm and my left wrist and arm were broke, but at the time I didn't know it. And I did the backstroke until I got him into the seawall. And uh, when I got him up to the seawall, I heard Buddy Colt screaming out in the bay. And I swam back out and I got Buddy and Buddy's leg was a compound fracture only hanging on by the tendons at this time. So I brought Buddy back in and uh, then I said to them, I'm going to go try to find Bobby because I'd found them too, but I couldn't find Bobby. So I went back out. I don't know for how long I was hollering at Bob for Bobby and I couldn't find him. So I was hoping that he had made it ashore or, you know, was still okay. And when we got back, when I got back to the seawall, uh, because I was pretty messed up, I had 180 stitches, cut my nose off, blinded me in this eye here, broke my wrist, broke my arm, fractured my clavicle, compound break in my lower leg, and some vertebrae in my back. And uh, I was getting sort of weak, so I decided maybe, you know, go try to get some help. And the thing was, it was low tide, and there was a ladder that coming off the boat ramp was where the light was at. Buddy Colt and Austin Idol let me crawl up on their back so I could crawl the ladder to, to reach the ladder. And I crawled out and I, there was a boat there and I dropped the boat into the water for them. And then I went to the house close by and I started kicking on the door. Believe this, I was totally naked. The impact knocked off my shoes, 
my socks, my pants, my shirt, everything. I was totally nude, full of blood. My head from here all the way down here, wide open. You could see the skull. And the elderly couple came to the door and they saw this sight of this guy, you know, standing there naked, full of blood. And they got, they panicked and they said, you better, you better get out of here. We're going to call the police. You better get out of here. We're going to call the police. So I said, good, somebody's coming. So I went back down and I talked to uh, Buddy and Austin. I told them help's on the way. Then I said, I better not take a chance. So I was pretty clear headed. I didn't have any pain at the time either, which is odd. So I went back to the house and I kicked the door in. I wanted to make sure that the police were coming. And then I went and sat under a tree and waited for the ambulance to get there. And then uh, they took me to the hospital. And then uh, sometime after maybe an hour in the hospital, I passed out and I was out for like three days. So it was a, it was a horrendous thing, horrendous. But I made it, you know what I mean?